Say hi to the Raven. This British-supplied Franken-Sam is the latest example of Ukraine's favorite wartime superpower. The ability to make anything deadly with just the right mix of fighting spirit, innovation, and a socket wrench. And it's not just improvisation, it's a pattern. Ukrainian command has institutionalized creativity in a way that feels less like a wartime adaptation and more like an open source arms race. Recently revealed in official Ukrainian video, the Raven looks less like something out of Raytheon's showroom and more like a Mad Max war rig if Mad Max was fighting Iranian Shahids and Russian Orlans instead of mutant biker gangs. Hey friends, Wes here, army vet, air force vet, journalist, law nerd, and the kind of guy who really appreciates when warfare innovation looks less like a military expo and more like a Mad Max sequel. Go Fury Road. The British Ministry of Defense has already delivered eight of these quirky beasts with five more in the pipeline. And yes, they've been confirmed in combat use going as far back as 2023. Since then, this system has fired over 400 missiles against aerial targets, achieving an estimated success rate of 70%. That's right, the Raven is already out there, swatting drones and shrugging off expectations. Amazing that we're just catching a glimpse of it now in 2025. You can almost picture the British and the Ukrainian engineers staring at a warehouse full of Cold War leftovers and muttering, let's have a spot of tea and then let's get weird. That's how the Raven was born, a low-profile, high-functioning, not-quite-mad-scientist solution to a very modern problem. At the center of the Raven's DNA is the HMT-600 Supercat, a British-designed all-terrain vehicle typically used for special operations, artillery towing, and hauling elite troops into places that most trucks fear to tread. In its original life, the Supercat was built for Afghanistan and the roughest parts of Iraq. Light, fast, and durable enough to shrug off mud, gravel, and enemy fire with equal disdain. So when the engineers at Task Force Kindred needed a platform that could support a 200-pound ASRAM missile and launch rail, and a targeting system cobbled together from drone parts and off-the-shelf optics, the Supercat's flatbed chassis and high ground clearance became the ideal blank canvas. Think of it as the Swiss army knife of military mobility, now with a new blade labeled air defense. But here's where it gets deliciously unorthodox. Instead of designing a new turret or a proprietary fire control module, they repurposed the original fighter jet missile rails, essentially taking what once launched missiles at Mach 2 from 40,000 feet and strapping it to the back of a truck, more likely to be seen delivering crates of ammo than launching air-to-air -air intercepts. It's not pretty. It's not elegant. But it absolutely gets the job done. The ASRAM is no slouch either. It's infrared-guided Mach 3 and optimized for high-agility intercepts. It uses a 256 by 256 resolution IR seeker, giving it excellent lock-on capability even in cluttered thermal environments like low-flying shiny drones trying to nap of the earth their way toward a power station. The missile's off-bore sight capability and advanced seeker tech, meaning it can engage targets without having to maneuver the truck itself, something extremely important when you're fighting swarms or reacting quickly to loitering threats. Now, normally a missile like that would be slaved to a multi-million dollar radar and fire control system, Ukraine said, cool story, bro, and plugged in a commercial gimbal camera, the kind used by civilian drone videographers, paired with thermal optics, a laser rangefinder, and a modded PS5 controller to control the entire system from inside the cab. This modular, low-tech meets high-tech combo not only makes the Raven cheap to produce and fast to deploy, it also opens a door to localized manufacturing or field repairs. A tire change, a fresh controller, maybe a new gimbal, and this thing is back in the fight. It doesn't need an airbase, a hardened hangar, or an extensive crew. It needs a truck, a missile, a camera, and someone with decent reflexes. That's the true genius of the Raven, and all of Ukraine's Frankensams, frankly. Not that it does something groundbreaking, 
but then it does something so incredibly useful with tools everyone else forgot they had. In the age of AI-enhanced drone swarms and hypersonic missiles, sometimes the answer to a complex problem is to dig through a warehouse, weld on the parts that still work, and create something new out of something old, even if it looks like it belongs in a post-apocalyptic museum. So welcome to Frank and Sam Nation, where nothing matches, but everything works. If the Raven seems odd, it's because it is. But Ukraine is a country that has made weird work. Since Russia's full-scale invasion in 2022, the Ukrainian military has become the master of battlefield mashups, integrating Eastern Bloc leftovers with Western missiles, often held together with little more than hope and hard wiring. Russian forces are launching thousands of drones, glide bombs, cruise missiles, and the occasional ballistic insult every single month. For Ukrainian forces, there is no luxury of waiting on pristine, factory-fresh interceptors with a full warranty and NATO standard user manuals. That's why the Raven matters. Like others in the Frank and Sam program, it gives Ukraine a rugged, mobile, shore ad platform that can follow units to the front or guard soft targets in the rear. It doesn't overly rely on centralized radar networks, it doesn't need a battalion-sized crew, and best of all, it turns existing stockpiles of British ASRAMs into one of the most cost-effective drone swatters on the planet. This kind of agility is what keeps Ukraine in the fight. Every time Russia adapts by changing flight profiles or coordinating swarm attacks, Ukraine counters with something new. Sometimes it's a high-speed radar homing missile. Sometimes it's a truck with a retired fighter jet's missile launch rails screwed onto the back. And in this war, both are equally essential. But there is a strategic limit to Frankensams. Frankensams are clever, scrappy, and in many cases lethal. But they're also fundamentally tactical tools masquerading as strategic assets. And that distinction matters when you're trying to defend an entire area the size of Texas from one of the world's most prolific missile-wielding adversaries. Here's the flaw. They do not scale. Easily. Frank and Sam's are brilliant case studies in battlefield improvisation, marrying surplus missiles with whatever launch platforms and sensors happen to be available. They're perfect for short-range defense of fixed targets, frontline units, or tactical objectives. But defending a nation's energy grid or intercepting hypersonic weapons screening in from 500 kilometers away? Well, that's where the wheels start to wobble. The core limitation is twofold, range and integration. These hybrid systems, by design, operate in isolation. Most lack networked radar, encrypted comms, or data links that would allow them to plug into a broader, layered air defense architecture. That means each Frankensam is essentially a lone wolf, effective in a small kill box, but sometimes blind to the rest of the airspace. And even when paired with modest targeting equipment like infrared gimbals or low-tier battlefield radars, they are constrained by physics. A short-range missile like the ASRAM or the R-73 or the AIM-9X can only engage targets within 10 to 20 kilometers. So while they are great for swatting drones or helicopters, they are practically useless against ballistic threats launched from hundreds of kilometers away or high-flying bombers orbiting outside the detection bubble. The unfortunate result is that Ukraine cities remain exposed to high-trajectory ballistic weapons like Russia's Iskender or Kinzel missiles, which rain down from stratospheric heights well outside of Frank and Sam's envelopes. And perhaps the greatest flaw of all is their inability to project deterrence. No matter how effective a converted missile on a truck might tactically be, it does not change the Russian calculus. Only systems like the Patriot or the Sam T can credibly threaten high-value Russian air targets and alter flight patterns, except for the exception of maybe the new Magura 7C drone. That thing can go anywhere in the Black Sea and keep Russia guessing. Frank and Sam's can't force a Tu-95 to divert course, nor can they hold caliber missile carriers at bay. They are reactive by nature, not preemptive. And in strategic warfare, being reactive is a losing hand. 
In short, Franken-Sams are gap fillers, not game changers. They are what you deploy when you don't have enough real SAM batteries to go around. They do save lives. They do buy time. But they do not impose the cost on the enemy the way a long-range integrated air defense network can. They are tactical duct tape in a war that increasingly demands supercomputers and industrial-scale logistics. But even though the Raven isn't a revolution in air defense, it might be something better. It shows that ingenuity still matters. That when faced with an existential threat, nations do not need to wait for perfect solutions. They improvise, they innovate, and they fight back with whatever they have. Ukraine's Franken-Sam fleet, and the Raven in particular, represents a tactical philosophy built on necessity. It's messy, it's unconventional, and occasionally ridiculous, but in war, effectiveness outranks elegance every single time. And if the next evolution of air defense looks like a super cat with a heat-seeking missile controlled by a teenager's PS5 controller, so be it. It works. And it works now. And that's all that matters. That's it for today, friends. Subscribing is the best way to stop me from trying to make money on OnlyFans. And trust me, you don't want to see that. So hit that subscribe button so that I can feel like a big shot. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.